This is the 2016 Chevy Spark EV. That's right, fully electric, no gas. And this is the greatest review of it that will ever happen. If you subscribe to my channel from my Nissan Leaf review, welcome back to another EV review. This glorified golf cart on wheels caught my attention in 2014. That's when they came out. And uh, I really like EVs, you know? You gotta give me some EVs. And this is my second one. Uh, in 2016, I actually got a hold of a local dealer that was trying to sell one of these. Uh, the price then was like 18 grand. But then I found out it was because uh, it was a lease price, giving the dealer the tax incentives. It's really weird. Uh, and I did not want to do the, a lease. Uh, and they were saying it was like 260 a month. It was, anyway, nope, no thanks. Roughly one year later, there was a local Chevy dealer, a different one, selling this 2016 for a little over $11,000. Why so inexpensive? The Lemon Law. This car has been bought back uh, by Chevy, the manufacturer, in California per the Lemon Law. I will comment further on that later in the review. Let's just get down to some of the details with some pros and cons. <laughs> Pro, this thing is fast, like stupid fast. This particular year has 140 horsepower and 327 foot-pounds of torque. In 2014, they actually had 400 foot-pounds of torque. I don't know why they dialed it down, but meh. 90 mile an hour top speed, yeah, pro, fast. Pro, DC fast charging. It's an option, uh, but this car's got it. And if you wanna charge quick, you can because of that. Like 30 minutes from empty to full, no joke. If you're at a 125 amp charger, that's a thing. Pro ish con. Uh, pro. Uh, it's got, you know, level two charging capability. Uh, uh, but the con part of that is that it's limited at 3,300 watts, uh, where a lot of EVs today are coming out with 6,600 watts on board. Uh, anyway, still perfectly usable at around seven hours to charge from empty to full uh, on that level two charger. Pro. You can plug it into your like normal wall socket. Also, there's two settings, eight amps and 12 amps. A miniature con with that is eight amps is the uh, default setting. So that's kind of a point of the butt. It takes like 20 hours, it's a long time. And then if you draw on eight amps, it takes a lot longer. Pro, remote connectivity. You can lock, unlock, start, check the location, uh, start a charge, set a charge time, uh, set up email and text reminders for a charge. It's lots of connectivity, really cool. Con, you eventually have to pay for it via OnStar, sort of. Like you'll still have some. Anyway, yeah, they make the terms. If you read the terms, it, it, it's clear. I don't want to talk about it. It's going to make ears bleed even more. <laughs> Bro, you can remote start the car with the key and it gets hot in the winter or cool in the summer, you know, inside the car. You can also turn off DC fast charging with the key. It's a feature I've actually used out of convenience, which, yeah. Pro, it's efficient. Now that might sound weird if you're not into EVs and you might think like, oh, EVs are just inherently efficient, but this thing uses even less electricity to go a distance than most EVs, if that makes sense. Uh, one reason, the weight. It's around 2,800 pounds. It's really light compared to like a leaf. It's 3,600, I think. And then second reason is the size. This thing cuts through the air, you know? Like a ninja. Bro. Con, four seats. Definitely not five seats. Yep. If you commute daily all by yourself though, this is a brilliant option. Con-ish pro range. Uh, actually, nope, it's a con. But man, it's so doable. 82 mile EPA estimated range. And that's on point. If you're not gonna use like the AC or heat and it's um, like 60 degrees or hotter outside, you can get this thing to go over hundred miles. No problem, as long as you're not like on the freeway. Mm. And yeah, I was I did a, a long distance trip where the, it was mainly highway driving, like 55 miles an hour, six miles per kilowatt hour. That's crazy. Heck yeah, pro. A battery is a 19 kilowatt hour with 17-ish usable. Pro, four-wheel disc brakes. Yeah, that's a pro. Pro, incredibly aggressive regen capability. If you put the car in low, uh, it'll slow it down like really well. And when you apply the brakes, like it'll even increase the regen more, kind of like a, a leaf if you're familiar with that. And uh, But it'll bring it all the way up to 60,000 watts of regen. That is crazy. My leaf does half that. The regen on this beast is great. Uh, even at a full charge, it'll regen over 10 kilowatts it's just uh, kind of crazy if you ask me i hope the battery can handle it extra pro uh, when you let off the gas 
Nah, I still can't. Uh, the uh, throttle. When you let off the throttle and you're in low, the brake lights come on as they should because the car slows down quite a bit. So that's a pro. Pro volume adjustment knobs on the steering wheel. That's kind of nice. Uh, but just con in general is that every time you adjust the volume, no matter what you got going on the screen here, it just blacks it all out. And you've got, you just got to look at these numbers. What? what? Pro windshield wipers, yeah, that's cool, but a uh, con is that it's uh, backwards. So when you press down, it does the mint, and you go up to turn it on, it's just weird. Whoa, very fast. Pro. Pro, a rear wiper. Oh, oh, it sounds a little, it sounds a little upset though. Con, you cannot adjust the full charge percentage. So if you charge, it's always to 100% every time, unless uh, you stop the charge manually by unplugging it or like cutting the power. There is no hilltop reserve feature on this car. It's just meh. I'd like to be able to adjust that if I could. Con, the quality of the inside. <laughs> now, I did not get the upper level trim vehicle. Pro, the seat pattern is techno awesome, but all you really get and that upper level trim is like this fake leather seats all over the seat. And then the steering wheel as well has this leather, I think they call it leatherette, it's vinyl. Come on guys. I'm, I guess I'm glad you didn't kill a cow to get it, but come on guys, leatherette. This car is a $12,000 car when it's a gas car and that shows through to its uh, EV version. This car is built to do a couple things, you know? It's built to haul people around cheaply and um, still also make a GM a profit. They made some of these Sparks uh, EVs and thus increased the retail price to around 26 grand. And uh, But the $12,000 interior remains. Except, hmm, well, no, pro, dual screens. What? Yep, the gauge cluster. Uh, let's call it the cluster. Uh, it's a screen. Uh, and the infotainment system is also a screen, the exact same size as well. And no, the gauge cluster is not a touch screen. That wouldn't provide any, I don't know what that would do. Con, the infotainment system is silly. The buttons are not good. Uh, it's like trying to run a computer, but you don't have a mouse, sort of, in some situations, like there's a lot of buttons. And then I keep accidentally pressing that home button and there's like a big old power button and I just don't know. Oh, those volume switches? I just end up using the ones on the steering wheel. That's kind of nice. Con, the dome light. There's one dome light. It has a trunk light, though. That's a pro. Pro! <laughs> Con, the sound quality of the stereo system is just atrocious. That's all there is to it. <laughs> pro, adjustable steering wheel gauge combo. Up and down, huh? Why not? Pro, you see the state of charge when you open the door. Usually, sort of. So like you walk up to the car, you unlock it, you open the door, and you can see it says like, hey, you got this many miles. Or sometimes it just like the screen turns on and it's backlit, but it remains black, which is weird. Pro, two 12 volt outlets front and back. Pro, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, nice. Pro, USB connectivity. Con, no Android Auto or whatever the iPhone equivalent is. It just doesn't have that. Oh, it's a sad panda right there. Uh, only the 2016 and newer gas sparks have that. Meh. Pro, you can fold the seats down for more cargo space. There's actually a decent amount of space. Pro, handlebars all around. Pro, Wi-Fi, yes, it has Wi-Fi. I tested here for speed and like uh, the in real life stats and all that, but um, I've tested it with my phone in the past and it got way faster speeds and I was gonna game on Overwatch, but I just couldn't, so uh, maybe in another video. Pro, the driver's seat armrest. This is the epitome of luxury. What better way to bask in the glory of comfort, but with an armrest, just for you. Armrest. <laughs> You can zip it off too, it looks like. It's got a zipper there. I'm not gonna try to do that because then I probably won't be able to get it back on. Pro, interior lighting, sort of. I know I said there was only one dome light, but at night, you can see in the dark, sort of-ish. Look at that, that's kind of cool. Because of light over the cup holders, yeah. It's nice that they did that. It's like a little bluish aqua. Wait, pro, cup holders, door, door, under the radio, there's two of them. Middle back seat area ish thing, and also on the back seat. Yeah, con, they're skinny. Every single one of them skinny. And those ones in the front, it's really weird. The one on the left is skinny and deep, and the one on the right is a little bit like wider and shorter. I've never seen that before. Pro sport mode. Oh, yeah. I think I said it, but this thing is quick. Like, quick. Pro. 
<laughs> ah, it lights up the word sport on the gauge. You press it, and it makes the, the throttle more sensitive. Yeah, makes you feel like you're driving a really fast car, because you are. Final con I have about the car is a thing that I'd like to just see in more cars, and that is like a programmable button. There's nowhere in here is there a programmable button. And specifically, I would use that feature uh, to do this. You'll notice there's this charge mode immediate. Just like in the Leaf, uh, with the there's a button on the dash, like, okay, just gonna bypass the charge timer and just do immediate. You gotta go, like, uh, you gotta go to the Leaf, you go to charging, and then you make sure that it's on immediate. You can do this from the phone app as well, but anyway, no programmable button. I call that a con. Yeah. Congrats, you survived the PC list. Now let's get into some details. Okay, that speed I was talking about, it's actually scary. Like, compared to my Leaf, which is a 2012, and it tops out at 80 kilowatts, uh, and, yeah, weighs around 3,600 pounds, uh, this thing can draw 120,000 watts like wide open. I don't know, there's no throttle though, so it's not wide open, it's wide, uh, fully, fully circuited? I don't even know. Yeah, and it weighs 2,800 pounds. It's like skittish when you floor it, uh, and it, like if you're kind of turning slightly one direction or the other way, the car will just like steer the direction, like it's like, I wanna go that way. <laughs> and it's weird, I've never experienced that. Also, uh, if you floor it going straight, you'll get like a lot of response from the traction control uh, and feedback and steering and all that. But um, sometimes you get the grip just right and it is just stupid fast. Uh, yeah, and then sometimes it's just like left, right, left, right. Like, ah, I'm gonna go straight, let me get it out of my way. <laughs> it's so dumb. Uh, it is entertaining and I like it. I remember I was test driving the car and I got on the freeway and like, I was barely having to touch the gas throttle thing for the lever. <laughs> and I was, I was in like uh, three lanes. I was in the middle lane. I went to the fast lane, I like barely pushed. And I'm like, whoa, where are we going? Like, what is going on here? Compared to a leaf. That's crazy. So if you're going 55 and 65, you want to pass someone, it, it can do that. And this thing picks up really fast. It's nice. I like having that ability, that like power. Don't get me wrong. The leaf is cool and all. But this car is like far different in the performance realm. Okay, so this is interesting. Uh, no locking filler cap. There's this little spring-loaded thing here. So it's either in or out. And when it's in, it just uses like the spring-loaded portion of the hinge to open it. And the only other thing going on here is uh, there's a button in there to sense whether or not the door's open. For just the filler cap. I foresee this breaking. Now the cool part about this is when it's plugged into something uh, there's a sensor switch up here that also knows when the button is pressed and the car will stop demanding electricity right when you press the button. It's kind of cool. Pro it's got navigation-ish sort of. So your OnStar you can send navigation here it'll do step by step and you'll see little pictures of like the road here, but you won't get the map there. However, I'm gonna call this a con. Con, you, ha you there's an app you can get. And it's a smartphone link, and, and it's this Bringo. Bringo, right? Oh. So this is, uh, I'm calling this a con because you gotta do this, this secondary thing and then it brings it up on the phone. It's really silly. Let's talk about that cage cluster though. It's a seven inch screen. The left is a remaining battery and the right is your floaty ball because we understand a floaty ball and there's leaves that spin inside the floaty ball depending on how much you ball with the floaty. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, yeah, right? Okay, so it gets better. Uh, there's a button that you can start pressing and, and then this blue ball flies in. And it gives you like more detailed look at the battery, a theoretical distance, like you have more or less. It's a minimum or maximum. And then you've got yeah, the center blue ball. And it's been accurate with my 2,000 plus miles I put on the car so far. You can actually rely on that gauge. It's really good. That's not all though, okay? That's not all. You can press that button again and the ball switches positions. And yeah. And you can get like the wattage readout. So we want to go or slow down, uh, it'll show you, like it'll move up or down. And when it goes down, it goes green. Uh, I like that. And you know what? I like the other one too. And you can do both at the same time. I really prefer the blue balls. 
Okay, the extra info that populates on the gauge screen is pretty neat. Uh, images of like the doors being open. It's cool. I like that. Uh, yeah, you can check it out. It's also got the trunk. When you open that, it shows that in the hood as well. Not bad. Charge door, it just reads the words charge doors open. The infotainment has issues. I'll make this quick. When you physically connect a phone to the USB cable, like down below, it wants to access your phone. So uh, if you've got like XM radio on and then you plug in your phone and it'll, it'll shut off the XM radio. And then if your phone doesn't have music, like I said, it'll shut off your XM radio, but it'll also let you know you don't have music. Why? Why are you doing that? Why are you shutting off my XM letting me know I don't have any music? I do have music. It's on XM. Stop it. <laughs> I do like the leaf button here. You can see that uh, there's a graphic that shows up. It's supposed to hypnotize you if you're not careful. It shows like energy going in and out. The charge settings can be reached there. And you can see this overall like power usage dial. Uh, do you have a bolt? If you do, what do you think about this layout and the colors and stuff? Leave it in the comments below, please. I think they did better with the spark than they did with the bolt when it comes to the graphic displays. That's tragic if that's the case because the bolt's supposed to be better. And it is in so many ways, but like this, the graphics on the spark just... Yeah. <laughs> they seem so much better. That bolt range though. Stereo adjustment's cool. You can pick like where you want the sound. If it's like balanced. Yeah. Alright. Let's step outside and pop the hood. Talk about what's under the hood. Now you can see it here. There's not a whole lot to uh, talk about. They try to make it look like an engine, sort of. Like a forward-facing V4 or something. It's definitely a rear-wheel drive car. No, wait a minute. No, it's not. You can see there's like uh, very large tubes for the AC system because it's also what cools the battery, which is awesome. The brakes don't have like a vacuum booster. Duh. They have a hydraulic boosted brakes, it looks like. Neato. Neato. Okay. So my notes say segue to fast charging. So let's segue to fast charging. My benchmark for DC fast charging is my Nissan Leaf. It has a charge curve like this. 0 to 80% in 30 minutes. That's uh, what the Leaf can do. If the temperature outside is not too cold. If it's cold outside, it takes way longer. Or if the battery's cold, it takes way longer. And also the same if it's too hot. Uh, anyway, my Spark EV, entirely different beast. Rather than dropping off wattage dramatically, like shortly after beginning the charge, the Spark will keep picking up wattage until it hits 80%. So it's keeping the amperage constant, but like, what? Huh? <laughs> what it essentially does is hits max amperage and just keeps that until 80%. This blows my mind away. The reason for this is partly because of the programming that they do, like what they allow Chevy does for the battery. And then the active cooling uh, that the Spark has with the, the battery as well just helps manage this. One of the Chevy like commercials that says multiple charges per thing, I, I, I'll show it there. I'll link that uh, video in the description below as well. But it'll seriously charge from 30% to 80% in 10 minutes. And if you have uh, that's, uh, at a 125 amp charger or a 50 kilowatt charger, yeah. And from 30% uh, to full, it takes 25 minutes. It's crazy. I went on a road trip recently and did like way more fast charging. And it's just, oh man, it's just awesome in the Spark. This changes things for me because I used to wait for my Leaf to be like really low state of charge before I would fast charge it. Uh, where the Spark, if it's anywhere under 80%, it'll just take the full charge rate. Like that's amazing. It changes how you can like route plan, uh, but more so it just makes it more convenient. It's just really cool. Uh, it charges in like half the time of the Leaf. And I know it takes less time to charge than the Leaf and you might be thinking, oh, because the battery is like super small compared to the Leaf battery. But this is a 19 kilowatt hour battery and the Leaf is 24. This has like 17-ish usable, almost 18, and the uh, Leaf has, I think it's like 21. So even though the batteries are different sizes, like just the curve, Speaks for itself, so just stare at the curve. <laughs> okay, if you're looking into buying a Chevy Bolt, the fully electric car they came out with uh, recently, uh, I've heard that the wattage drops 
when you're DC fast charging uh, at around like 50% state of charge. I was watching this uh, news column is the name of a channel and there's a couple others that I've just seen and it's just weird because like if the spark can go full amperage all the way to 80% but the bolt can't, I don't know, why, Chevy? <laughs> Maybe different battery chemistry or something, I don't know. I tested uh, DC charging below freezing as well uh, and it started around 20,000 watts. I think it was like 30% charge and slowly crawled up to the uh, 48 kilowatt rate before it then started dropping again. So cold does affect it, but if it's like 40 degrees outside or warmer, it just, it doesn't, there's no difference. It's just full speed. Oh, it's so awesome. The plug name, uh, CCS or uh, combined charge system. Okay, we're gonna take this thing for a spin. I'm gonna talk some and it's gonna be good. We're gonna take it for a little spin now, okay? Pro, you can go from reverse to drive without having to worry about grinding any gears or anything, but your camera might fall over. I would like to take this moment to thank Fort Smallwood Park, where I did a lot of filming, a whole lot of filming, yeah. And I'm going the right way. Okay, so you gotta keep in mind, I've been driving an EV very regularly since like December. It's almost been exactly one year since I bought my Nissan Leaf, which my wife and I are still very happy about. But this car is just, it's so much better in so many ways and just really not good in a couple. And the main one is the seats. Four seats our entire family cannot fit in. Well, wow, hey, okay. Ha. Ah. But yes, this is incredibly fun to drive. We are now going the speed limit of 25. That took a half a second, as a, I guess it, as it should. Ah. Oh, people walking. Okay, let's increase to 35. Three and two and. <laughs> and we're going third. Oh. We'll just use the cruise control to increase speed. Remember how I said it was a like $12,000 car interior? It's the same when it comes to the acoustics. It's very loud. I'm going 45 and it sounds like I'm in a washing machine. So we're gonna go take a DC quick charge. Talk about the car some while we get there. Okay, why did I buy the car? One, EV obsession. Yeah. Two, uh, I didn't want to drive the Volvo every day to work, or like the van, because I don't like gas cars anymore. It costs a lot more to operate, like mile for mile, a gas car, per what we pay for electricity at home, which is 13 cents a kilowatt hour delivered, like after all the taxes and stuff. Um, yeah. Just my work driving alone, this car compared to the Volvo is, uh, Volvo is $60 a month in gas at $2.30 a gallon. This car, $17 a month in electricity. At $150 a month payment, and you're already spending, what is it that we saved in gas? Like $43-ish? Like that could theoretically go towards the payment making that 150 less. It's just crazy. It's craziness. So yeah, I, I, and also I felt bad about driving like the Leaf to work, because then I would leave the gas car for the wife and the kids, and that's not as cool. The Leaf is really cool, because it's got a button. You can just have the key in your pocket, and you press a button outside the car, unlocks the car. This car doesn't have that. Cut. <laughs> Oh, we got people going. We got people going. I'm gonna have to yield. They're gonna have to yield to my 120,000 watts. Yeah. And that's 55, okay. Okay, I don't know if you can hear that, but now we're going around 55 miles an hour on the highway. And the seats are up in the back. And the reason I say that is because when they're down, it makes even more sound. But uh, yeah, that's quite a bit of sound. I don't think it's tire sound. I think it's just the wind going by the car. Yep. I had been looking at these Spark EVs since they came out. It's kind of weird that I ended up buying one. What I really wanted was a used Model S with seven seats in it. There was a period of time where you could find one for like mid 40s to low 50s, but like that's a $700 a month payment if you don't put a whole lot down. 
and uh, no, you know, that's uh, no, uh, I like watching other people review cars, specifically Doug DeMauro, great guy. Alex on autos, awesome at reviewing cars. Uh, even regular car reviews, that's more for entertainment. And I guess little bits of knowledge, but the, uh, the first two I mentioned, they're pretty good at knowing things about cars, like when you steer, they, they know the terminology of what's going on and how, how the car could be better or something. I have no, I have no ability there when it comes to reviewing a car. I don't know if like the steering is tight or not. I don't, I don't know. I do know though that this car is is really quick. I took a road trip with my kid. Uh, it was like 60 degrees outside. I think I might have said this already. You know, I use like nine to 12 kilowatts just to keep the car at 55. Uh, yeah, you know, give or take a few miles an hour. Yeah, that's great. That's really good. Okay, so my point about that was that like the freeway driving, Though it does take a dent on your range compared to not driving on the freeway or just high-speed uh, driving, it's it's still very much doable. And uh, yeah, Ooh, the region is awesome. In low, the car does so good. Like I just went around a clover, and I didn't even have to touch the brakes. It was great. Ha! Huh. And like speeding up, uh, Speeding up is just great. Slowing down is great. You sometimes touch the brakes if you run this car in low. Like I said earlier, the brake lights do come on when you let off the throttle entirely when you're in low, which is good. Uh, wow, that was my burp. Uh, I'm six feet tall, I don't know if you can how like the size proportions, but I got a lot of headroom compared to some other cars in this car. What else? Another weird thing about the car is when it's like going low, it'll ask you whether or not you want to turn off the radio. It'll be like, hey, do you want to save energy and turn off the radio? Cause you might strand yourself because you're at 15%. You only got a couple miles left. Huh? Anyway, the only time that happened to me, I knew that I'd still have like another eight miles past where I needed to go. Uh, so I just kept listening to the radio like a badass. The, the vision, I don't know. Uh, okay, so there's a distance where like your front bumper is and where you sit in the car, you can kind of judge where that is. So like if you're parking up against a wall or uh, behind another car uh, or like a pole or something, and you've got this, uh, like, you, this distance. I still haven't learned that with this car. I've driven it, uh, it's at 3,700 miles. I got it at 1,200 miles. And I just, I'll get so uncomfortably close to a car, uh, like when I park, uh, knowing that, like, I keep getting this wrong. And then I'll get out and there's still like two feet in front of the car. This car is so dinky. It's, it's hard to judge just how far in front of you the hood or the bumper is, you know? Uh, ooh, pro, and I don't think I said it in the, earlier, I definitely didn't say it earlier, park ability. You can park this car in uh, tighter spots. And that is great, because uh, parking can sometimes be a pain in the ass. Yeah. Of course, it goes uh, it goes right along with the whole con of not having five seats. If there's a passenger here, I could elbow them very easily. Meh. And I drive every car I've ever owned. The majority of its utilization was with one person in it. And uh, this car now is more appropriate for that kind of use. Yeah. In Baltimore here, there is a... Domino's Pizza, and at that Domino's Pizza, there is a currently free DC fast charger. Uh, it's 100 amps, just like the one we're going to now, put in by EV Institute. I think uh, Baltimore City has done the funding through some sort of federal government thing. I'm not going to deliver pizzas anytime soon. 
But, like, if, if things like that start becoming more normal, and especially if the energy is inexpensive or free, that's just going to change things for people in a very positive way. I did, at one point in time, deliver four Dominoes, and uh, I ended up buying a Geo Tracker. And that car was cool and all. 25 miles a gallon, no matter what speed. Very low geared. Okay, we're pulling in now, and there's nobody here, it seems. So that's cool. Uh, we're just gonna start a charge. Okay, weird things about the car. This right here, this is your like lights. So that's easy enough to figure out, right? Like you turn it on, but you know how you flash people and like the, the brights, they flash so you can signal like, yeah, I see you, go. Flash, yeah, look at that, do you see it? It honks, it flashes and honks. That's weird, unless it's in park, huh. Then it just flashes. That's really weird. Yeah, there's that configuration button. Yeah. So it's nice that they got these door pockets, right? They go back pretty far. But it's weird because there's this extra one. It's like, I don't know what to put in there. What do you put in there? You can't even put your hand in there. Get your hand in there. Door grips are good, pretty strong, yeah. Pretty strong. Whoa. Nice to power windows in such a small car. Oh, okay, about that Bringo app. If you wanna see the percentage, I can't figure out another way around it, but there is a way to see the actual battery percentage of charge outside of using the Bluetooth dongle, which, duh. Caution, read the thing, okay. But. So if you go into the menu on the Bringo app and you go to Eco and then you go press battery status, you will then be able to see the percentage of charge. <laughs> that is how you see the percentage of charge that's weird and, and I think that's a con. Oh yeah, another weird thing about the car, if you've already seen this, if you've seen the other uh, reviews, the, the, yeah. That by the way is not a thing I just, you know, I don't care to have those on my computer. I'll put them somewhere where they belong, like in a car. Oh, another th weird thing about the car is OnStar allows you to have like a phone number with the car, so you can essentially have a, f a car phone, which is pretty cool. You know, if you want to pay for that. I, I don't think I'm ever going to pay for that. It's got that weird, can you hear it? It makes a sound just like the leaf does. Can you hear that when you put it in park or in neutral? It turns off, and you put it in drive. It's weird. Uh, in neutral, drive. Neutral, reverse, same. Drive, huh, and let's take off. That is a massive pile of stuff. This does look complicated though, now that I'm looking at it through the camera like screen, there's all these buttons everywhere. Look at all the buttons. There's buttons everywhere, buttons. Oh. Another weird thing about the car is this door handle is mounted on the side of it. So strange. The buttons. <clears throat> like, do you hear that? I'm pretty sure the buttons are gonna break. <sighs> okay, the Lemon Law, let's talk about it. So this car was bought back from the first owner due to the Lemon Law. Uh, the defect was this, battery cables short. What, what does that, what does that mean? All I can think of that means is that there was a faulty traction battery cable or like cable system that was hooked up, okay, so. Let's just, let's go over some facts. That was one, that was a fact, okay? Uh, the car had 1,200 miles on it when I got it. Not a thing wrong with it. Repairs were done per the Lemon Law defects and it were, the specific defects were warranted for 12 months after uh, sale. But it's crazy because the car is still under all of its original manufacturer warranties and there's, 
there's several different ones. Like the battery one goes for like eight years. The drivetrain one is five. The overall one is three. Those are all still in effect. Uh, there were no logos on the back door, like the Spark EV logo and the Chevy uh, bow tie were gone. And, and there were like vinyl stripping underneath some of like the rubber parts of the paneling and also in the back, as you can see. So those are facts. Fact, the car was transported to a dealer to be sold on the other side of the country. So I'm in Maryland. That's where I bought this car and it was transported from California. So those are some facts. I will warn you now, this is the speculation zone. <laughs> what is here is not necessarily fact, okay? Proceeding to speculation now. Those facts I mentioned uh, are reasons, I believe. No one before me bought the car. I even had someone commenting about how they, I think they actually saw the car that I bought on my preview video. Anyone with a low or to non-ability to fix cars would run from this car, uh, given the paperwork history, like they just show you it. It's like, oh, by the way, this car was blah lemon. The price was low and that was really good for me. But as I mentioned earlier, that, that was, as a separate from this, uh, there was a dealer that was gonna lease me a car, uh, but they would get this federal tax incentives because they would own the car, right? So that's the thing I mentioned at the beginning of the review. So imagine if you had a dealer or someone with connections at a dealer speculating right now, buy the car, get the tax benefits from it, then shortly after, maybe six months or so, discover that there's a defect or maybe uh, suffer from a defect uh, and process the car to be repurchased by the manufacturer via the lemon law. Someone who knows that process would, would have a much easier time doing that. Interesting, huh? In California, the state incentives as well, uh, with the federal tax credit, uh, one could regain about $10,000 worth of value on their taxes. So imagine someone doing that, like getting all those tax incentives and then the manufacturer buys the car back in full. It sounds like a sweet and very illegal deal for the first buyer uh, if they rigged the car to be a lemon. And that's that's the like fulcrum of the entire situation that I'm speculating here. Was it a true lemon? Or was it rigged? You know what I mean? My speculation uh, is because every part that is needed for that speculation seems to be present. And of course, it's like a logical fallacy uh, at best, maybe like straw man or house of cars or something, I don't know. Uh, but it does resemble a diagnostic thought pattern nonetheless, you know, like, oh, all these, that's interesting. Now this proves absolutely nothing. And I only speculate because of the simplicity of the issue. It's uh, the battery cables short like seems beyond me as to how that applies to the lemon law. Uh, how, you know, I don't know the lemon law. I heard the radio can be broken and then just buy the car back because this is a lemon. It's an incredibly easy fix under warranty as well. Like it's just, mm. So this car has been flawless for me. Uh, minus one hiccup so far where the radio took like 30 seconds to turn on. Also though, the car appears to have never been worked on. Like I don't see any tool markings near any screws or things like that showing the car was worked on, so. I don't know. Wow, if you made it this far, thanks. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please share below what you thought in the comments. Uh, did I miss anything? What do you want to see more of, meh? Oh okay, yeah, check out my channels for more EV reviews. Uh, I currently have only the Nissan Leaf review at the posting of this video, uh, but I'll add more as I can. It'll be under my electric vehicles playlist. There are other EV related videos on my channel as well, like the public charging one. I'll link that in the eye in the corner of the screen. Uh, if you've not watched the channel uh, fully charged, you should do that. Like now, go. Go and watch that one and subscribe to it. That's an awesome channel. Um, also, Transport Evolved. It's a good channel to keep an eye on, like uh, if you're getting into EVs and you like the topic and uh, she follows the news. It's not always precise, but it, it gives you a good pulse. I'll also link a couple other EV related videos from other channels. If you like this video, there's a button for that. The like button, hit that. If you want to see more videos like it, hit there's a button for that. Subscribe. And if you're just bored, cruise my channel. You'll be less bored. Anyway, I hope that helped. See you later, internet.